We are here at the Indie Mega Booth, getting a little taste of Japan with Playism. I'm here with Josh of Active Gaming Media. Nice to meet you. Can you let us know a little bit about Playism and the goal of Active Gaming Media? All right, so Active Gaming Media ourselves, we do localization, marketing, and creative, like designing uh, advertisements and stuff. About three years ago, while I had just entered the company, I was doing a lot of manga translations and cell phone translations. They decided they wanted to combine all of the different facets of the company, so localization, marketing, creative, into a platform. And one of the reasons they wanted to do that is they had seen a lot about the indie scene over in the West, and had noticed that Japan had really not caught on. Like, there had been, it's still a smaller market, very closed, and you know, you have things like Komike, which are huge, but they're also twice a year, so it's only certain times where you can really support the industry. So they got together and they decided to make a platform and start bringing, the original idea was bringing Western games over to Japan by translating them. So we worked on stuff like Machinarium, Space Kim, Dear Esther, stuff like that. And then a year later, we spent that year basically getting in touch with as many Japanese developers as possible. And then we started bringing their games over to the West by translating them, bringing them to Steam and GOG and stuff like that. Yeah, I was going to ask, uh, when, nowadays, after you've just started doing this, are you being approached by other Japanese indie developers, or are you actually going out and going to the, the conventions and seeing what games you would like to bring over, or are you just completely like an open book? I mean, it's an open book, honestly. Like, we get contacted by people a lot of times recently, especially more this year than the last few years, because we've gotten more and more uh, notoriety as we've gone along. But we also make sure to go to all the events we can. We usually send at least one person to at least Komike in the winter. Summertime, we're always busy around that time of year because of uh, it's right around the preparation for Tokyo Game Show. Sometimes we do go to the summer event as well. We, w we were part of the Bit Summit event also back in March, so I ran into a bunch of cool games there that I have to start translating as soon as I get back from this event. <laughs> we need this now. Get, get some translators on this game, stat. Uh, so, uh, right now you have three games yep. right, right here. You've got Carol Blaster and Astro Breed and uh, La Mulana 2. Can yep. you tell us a little information about those three games? That All right, so Carol Blaster is a new game from Amaya Daisuke, the P Studio Pixel, the only guy in Studio Pixel, basically. People don't know who he is. He's a creator of Cave Story. Um, it is a different kind of game. It is, I mean, Cave Story is very open, kind of Metroidvania style. Um, this one is a stage-based, tighter design, um, smaller game in general, but also just, uh, just as much fun. There's still like weapon upgrades and different kinds of weapons, some small secrets in the game. It also, of course, has a very story with a lot of personality, just like Cave Story, as you would expect from a game from him. Um, and it's coming out on May 11th. And right now, and it's coming out on PC and iPhone, actually. And it is actually a really good platformer on iPhone. Like, he came up with a really cool control scheme, probably the best I have seen of any other platformer. He also, I mean, related to Carol Blaster, there is a small mini prequel game on Playism right now. It is for free. It's just a 15-minute platformer game starring another character inside that world. It's pretty cool. It's a very, it's actually really difficult. Maybe even more difficult than Carol Blaster. <laughs> more difficult. Maybe. I, I beat Carol Blaster easier than I did Pink Hour, so I'm not sure. <laughs> Now, well, what can you tell me about Astro Breed? It, was, it looks like a, a really hectic shooter, which is typical of the Japanese uh, in, in the market, but what else can we know about it? So Astro Breed is pretty interesting. I mean, it's a shmup, but it's not a vertical or a horizontal. It's kind of like Panzer Dragoon in a way, that it changes the viewpoint a lot. Sometimes you are going vertical, sometimes you have to go horizontal, sometimes it goes straight on and you have like missiles coming at you and you need to shoot them out of the air. Um, they are the creator of Ether Vapor, so the name of the development uh, circle is uh, Edelweiss. It's also, it's already out on Playism in Japanese. We are currently doing the final uh, translation checks and stuff for the English version. It'll be coming out on Playism and Steam. Probably Playism first and Steam soon to follow within the next two months. So it's on its way. And the one that isn't here because they're over and showing it off at Twitch right now is the, the Kickstarter project La Mulana 2. Uh, how was it to, uh, working on the Kickstarter campaign? Were you involved in the Kickstarter campaign and trying to get it worked on? Yeah, I mean, I'm the original translator of La Mulana 1, or for the remake version at least. Um, so I did a lot of work with them from the beginning. I was part of the planning stages a lot of the Kickstarter. Like, I came up with a lot of the reward goals. I did a lot of research into the other Kickstarter projects that had been successful. So we were giving, we did a lot of meetings with them. I didn't run the project actually, that was Nayan who is over at the uh, Twitch booth right now with Naramuda-san. So he did all of the updates, I mean it was Kickstarter, we really put a lot of effort into it. We did updates every single day, Saturday, Sunday, he was working every day. So 
it was a hard project, honestly. Like, Kickstarter really takes a lot of effort, but the development team at Nigoro was really helpful. They were giving us assets anytime we asked for it. It was a really good project to work on. And uh, now these two games look like they were, they were made independently, and then you guys have translated essentially. Uh, are you uh, working in more in the development side at all with Blah Mulana too, or are you going to also be just working alongside them in just translation? It's a good question. I mean, we're probably going to take a lot of the. Uh, we'll be in charge of getting the feedback from the fans because they want to do a very open development style this time. So we will kind of be the gateway, I guess, almost like the middleman between the fans and Nigoro, like helping them get the feedback and explain it. So we'll have a little bit to say, but honestly, I just want them to make the game they want to make. So I don't plan to give them very any orders or anything. Like, just, oh, you need a month? All right, we're going to lock you in this hotel. Get it done. Like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and one thing that, that you've been working on, Playism is a platform digitally, and you're working now on getting it on Steam so that more, you get more visibility. Has, uh, has Active Gaming Media thought about potentially being a publisher for other platforms besides play, uh, PC, Steam, and Mac, uh, Mac and otherwise? Yeah, actually, I mean, it hasn't uh, reached uh, a lot of years recently, but we are going to do some PS4 publishing. Like, there's one issue with uh, Japanese uh, Sony Japan where you cannot actually sign a contract for PS4 unless you're a company, like a corporate entity. Like, that's different than Europe and America. So we kind of help them get the development kits. We're going to be the publisher. We're going to do the localization, and we'll do global releases. So that'll happen probably later this year. I mean, we've got development kits in some of the developers' hands, so... I can't say any titles or anything at this point, but yeah, keep your eyes out, basically. Yeah, and now you brought a good question about how the methodology of indie is so different from the American and European standpoint versus the Japanese. I know Nintendo, for instance, requires you have to be a Japanese publisher to publish in Japan. Uh, what would you like to see it, uh, evolve in the overall worldwide scale of uh, indie games? I mean, yeah, in Japan especially, there's still a little bit of a stigma that they are hobbyists, they're amateurs. They don't really, you know, they're not worth the time for some people. Sony has been very positive. Microsoft Japan has also been positive. We haven't really heard that much from Nintendo. We do hope that even if they're being positive, it's hard for them to change some of the legal, like, strappings around it. And I just want to see that change. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about making it easier just to publish in general. So I think if they do it in a global stance and make it easier, that it'll be easier for the Japanese developers as well. It's a big, big world, everybody. A big world for indie people just to come together and enjoy video games. So try them out. Gear Blaster comes out soon. And then after that, Astro Breed in 2015, La Mulana 2. And check out Playism right now.